to the doctor's office. But it's actually just the idea of printing. So the printer just went off again. Um, how does this work? Basically, you take a 3D file and the computer programs, there's many of them, uh, breaks the object down into layers, very, very fine layers, uh, thinner than a sheet of paper. Uh, it melts ABS plastic and then through an extruder it puts a fine line um, like a thread down of plastic and as it cools it creates whatever object that you want layer by layer by layer. So it runs on very simple principle X and Y and Z just like a CNC machine uh, just like your printer at home which is basically X and Y back and forth up and down, uh, back and forth, right and left, and they've added Z, which is height. So a bunch of people got together, decided that this would be something cool to make, and they launched uh, this company, I want to say less than four years ago. Uh, so the idea behind it was to put a kit together that everybody could have uh, that you can build, you can put it on your desktop just like your printer now that's on your desktop and you could begin to explore the idea of what exactly 3D printing is. That's pretty amazing. <laughs> the, um, there's so many uh, applications that, that you could see coming in the future on this. Well, I, it, there is. Um, there, there's a lot. And, and, and I think that um, actually the president in the State of the Union speech mentioned a 3D printer and a 3D printing company, and I didn't get that. But um, it's, it, it is applications. If, example, you're at home, you break something, you have a 3D printer on your desk, your knob for your dishwasher broke. You could download the file and print it out. Put it right on your dishwasher. Okay, I'll ask the, <laughs> the question of the elephant in the room. How much does one of these cost? Costs. Well, one that's already made by MakerBot is running around uh, $2,000. It's really not that expensive when you think about it. In time saving alone on making things, if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, this kit excuse me, which I put together myself was around $1,500. But the, the, the new ones, which are twice the size, come already assembled, are running about two grand. So this is, harkens back to the days when printers came about with computers and laser printer was a big deal, and then eventually everything comes down in price. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you, if you we've all been through the, the um, getting a color printer, because we remember dot, going from dot matrix printing to laser printing to inkjet printing. The same idea is going to happen with this. Uh, right now, we're probably just a little bit above the dot matrix for the 3D printer. And this is the lower end 3D printer. There are higher end 3D printers that use lasers and polymers that um, it, it's very complicated and very expensive. Uh, and if you want to see one of those work, uh, if you look at Jay Leno's garage in his restoration of automobiles, where it saves him money if he has a Stanley steamer and he needs a part for it, instead of having someone come in and <clears throat> manufacture that part, hand build that part, he can scan it, send it to his 3D printer, the 3D printer makes that part and it goes off to the casting forger, um, forger um, and then they send it back. So it's, it's really kind of a, how much money does that save you kind of thing. The future of manufacturing, 3D printing is probably how a lot of things are going to be made from now on. Uh, it allows immediate change. You can rapid prototype something uh, on your desk, you don't need to send it out. Um, so that's, that's basically where we are. I was reading where uh, 
clothing manufacturers are even looking at it for tailor tailor made clothes. Tailor made clothes, uh, whatever can be made in the computer, you can put all the directions, the measurements, the computer calculates that for you, and then it uh, prints out um, material. You can make chains, you can make jewelry, you can, I mean, it's really endless. It's one of those technologies that whatever you can apply it to is what it, you know, however it would help you. So it's not just for high-end things or low-end things or the average consumer. It's, it's basically for everyone. I know the dentists uh, for those Invisalign to help in a, in a uh, replacement of braces, sort of like they take a computer mold of your, your teeth and right. then project out how the pressure might change your teeth and then they make those plastic liners. Right. And this is where this technology could go. And as a matter of fact, the dentist could do that, take that mold, and while you're sitting there, the printer could print it out for you. You can have it that day. Yeah. So instead of waiting for things to be sent off and manufactured, <coughs> mm -hmm. you can have things almost instantly. People that are into inventing things, um, again, rapid prototyping. Print it out. It costs pennies to uh, a roll of ABS uh, wire. Here runs about forty-five, fifty dollars. It, it's a, it's five pounds. It lasts forever. So for pennies, you can print something out. If it's not right, you throw it away, recycle it, and reprint it. You mentioned earlier before the show that the, it's kind of like the weed whacker plastic that you get. <coughs> It is, and I'm sure that was in someone's mind when you, um, if you can see this, it's just actually just a, a, a piece of plastic wire going through a drive, it's heated up, and it comes out what looks like a hot melt glue gun nozzle, except it's very, very fine, uh, about the size of a thread that you would, uh, you know, sew your button on with, uh, except it's molten plastic. Uh, there's a lot of technology. Um, I'm, you know, I can tell you that it uses an STL code, which is stereolithography. Uh, but I don't understand how all of that works because I'm not one of those people. I just want the machine to do what it is. Uh, but some of this code goes back to um, the 40s and 50s. It's very simple code, uh, numerical telling the machine exactly what to do. So, also what this has done, <coughs> because this technology has been around for a while and we're just getting to use it um, with some, the 3D printing, 3D programming, 3D models, uh, it's now become the universal language. Whatever file I have, I can send to anyone anywhere in the world and they can build the same exact product. So, if you have a 3D printer and I have a 3D printer, and I live in California and you live in New York, I can send you and print you out the same thing instantly. Oh, so they're not facing the challenges of many different formats as no. like video and audio is no. in the past. Actually, this is because it's based on, um, it's called G-Code, and it, it is a G thing that, has an invent, that wasn't invented by Google, thank God. Um, because it, it, it is simple and it goes back all CNC machines run on this. All 3D printers have been developed on this. Uh, yeah, I mean, around the world. I could send whatever file I develop to China, to Japan, and they could print it out, look at it, send me notes, or they could change it, send it to my printer. I could print it out. We could do all kinds of rapid prototyping in minutes, which used to take hours, days, months. Very interesting. You're listening to Clarion Connection. I'm Ron Wilshire, and we'll take a short commercial break. Did you know that Sorry, did I go too fast or anything? No, 